The Women Conquer Business Show is an educational how-to women in business podcast that features stories, marketing news, and real-life experiences from fun and friendly hosts, Jen McFarland and Shelly Carney. Join us as we dive into the details so you can slay marketing overwhelm, streamline processes, and amplify your impact. You'll learn strategies and tactics, leadership skills, and practical advice from successful women entrepreneurs to help you grow, nurture, and sustain your business. All right. Hey there. <laughs> you are right. Oh, that was uh... last week's. That was last week's because <laughs> I forgot to upload the new one. That's the problem with having a new one every week. <laughs> Hey, uh, welcome to Women Conquer Business. If you're watching on YouTube, we just said the same thing as last week, that it's the top five digital marketing strategies. If you are listening on the show, hey, you're in the right place and it is a new week. Uh, it is a new week, week. This week, we are talking about courses. So should I create a course to expand my brand and business? We're going to be talking about who should be producing courses and why and what the best methods are for building and selling courses. But before that, hey there, Shelly. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it's a crazy week. Crazy, crazy. As you it can is. see, we're having lots of snow going on here in New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Except that's a fake background. Oh, shh. <laughs> we are having snow over there out the window. <laughs> it's a yeah. white day. White. I am white in the, the last few hours of, of being in Boise, Idaho. Uh, my mom got back from Hawaii. Boy, that oh. was the shock of her life coming back and seeing the, um, you know, cold weather. And it mm. was really windy yesterday. And she was she was thinking maybe I should just get back on that plane and go back. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, we had a beautiful day on Tuesday, seventy degrees, and we were outside walking and riding bikes and enjoying that beautiful weather. And then today. Poof, uh, it's snow everywhere. So crazy weather. It is crazy. So what else do you have going on? What do you have for uh, breaking news? Oh, breaking news. This just in. Where's our breaking news? <laughs> I think Toby took a little a little break. He took a break. <laughs> oh, we were supposed to have music. Boy, we're having a lot of production uh, issues today. <laughs> but that's okay. Breaking news. Breaking Go news. For it. All right. Breaking news. Toby is teaching photography classes on YouTube, live on YouTube, on Video Tarot Live. He's doing small set photography for product shots, still life, book covers, social media posts, and backgrounds. And today at one o'clock, he's going to show you how to shoot this shot of this uh, Valentine pendant. He's going to mm -hmm. explain the setup, uh, the lights, the equipment and settings and apertures and all of the all of the information that you could need to understand how to do photography like this. And oh, this is going to be a weekly show. He'll talk about different kinds of photography every week. Um, right now, he's in a series on small set photography, so uh, that includes backgrounds and little, you know, and underlays oh, yeah. and floor, floors and walls that they call so it. So who is this who is this for? Who are the like, ideal people to be uh, people who are interested in photography, learning photography, knowing more. Uh, maybe you get a brand new camera like we saw some people this week on a particular podcast we both enjoy and they're both <laughs> getting new cameras and they're like there's so many settings. I don't know how to do all this. Um if you're getting an in, in photography, it's a really great place to go and ask questions. If you oh, really want to learn more about uh, taking photographs of your personal products, say you uh, say you make things like oils or soaps or something that you sell on Etsy and you want really high quality professional looking photographs, you can learn to do that yourself. So that's really great. great for those people. So today at one o'clock, that's Mountain Standard Time. That's right. Then uh, go check that out at Video Tarot Live. That's on YouTube. And that is an example yes. of a course. So we're talking about courses. So you can do courses on YouTube, and there's a variety of ways that you can do that. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. But so for my breaking news, it's actually related to courses. <laughs> and then it's going to lead Yay. into uh, the broader discussion about having courses. So mm -hmm. 
Uh, for those of you who have, have followed me maybe for a while or know a little bit about me, I was an early adopter to a product called Member Vault. And Member Vault is a course platform really based in gamification. And what gamification is, it's almost like when you are, it's like being rewarded for continuing to play, basically. So it's a lot like Netflix for business owners who just want to create a lot of stuff and kind of keep people engaged and keep them on. You can give people points. And then if they earn enough points, they can upgrade into free products and all different kinds of things like that. Um, and it is a great platform for people who are just getting started with courses. And so full disclosure, you know, I am I am a certified partner for Member Vault. I'm also somebody who was a founding member. So I was one of their founding 100 and I have paid <laughs> a lifetime fee to have it. So, I, you know, as I say this, understand that I know a lot about this product. I really believe in them. They're a married couple in Olympia, Washington, which is only like an hour and a half maybe from where I live. And I've just watched this company grow and I've really enjoyed it now. One of the reasons that I was always able to really recommend Member Vault to people is their pricing structure. So they have always had a forever free program. It's something that they have offered since the beginning. So if for forever, if you had 100 people or fewer, um, they may have recently lowered that to 50. But if you had like 100 people or fewer, you had the full featured product and you could use it for anything. You could make these were not you didn't have to have free products and you could have like, you know, it was like three products and yeah, capped at 100 people. So imagine that you could do everything. So think about it like this. You could have like a $500 a person per month product <laughs> running on Member Vault. And as long as you had under 100 people, it would be free. So it was an amazing deal. Uh, the mistake I think that they made is that they called it forever free. <laughs> so when you call something forever free, people have expectations. Um, and we're going to put a pin in that here in a second. They also have amazing customer service. And so they have had this really amazing Facebook group with all these people singing their praises. And they have been answering the call. Like anytime people were asking for things, asking for features, talking to people about features, they were always there answering the bell. So on February 14th, this is the breaking news. On February 14th, Member Vault announced that they were discontinuing the Forever Free plan. They were discontinuing the starter plan and the base plan, unless you were already in it. And then what they're going to is a single plan at $99 per month, unless you were already in there. <laughs> like if you already had a paid plan, they will keep you at that paid plan um, for life, you know, um, but not the free plan. They're not offering that anymore. And the reason was, and I think that this is perfectly understandable, they weren't making money. <laughs> like you can't, it wasn't sustainable for their business. And I assume that they were spending a great deal of time in the Member Vault Collaborative, in everywhere, really helping people through things and helping people grow their business. Well, they weren't business consultants, A, they still aren't. <laughs> They're trying to make money and sell a product. So when they announced that they were getting rid of the Forever Free program, this was still, it's only like three days ago, uh, the flaming pitchforks have been out <laughs> everywhere in that Facebook group. I mean, people who have like, you know, I mean, I just mentioned you could have had like a half million dollar business or a million dollar business running out of Member Vault for free. And they're not making a dime. They don't even take anything off of like payments or anything. So all these people are just freaking out and everything. And it's like the truth is running a business costs money. And if you are running something like a course platform or anything, you need to make money. So what they're doing is they've decided that they want to have the best service, however they're defining it. And I think they're changing their services as well. And they want to have up to 10,000 people paying. So they want to cap their service at 10,000 people paying $99 a month. And that's what they figured out that they can do and what works for them. The lesson, I think, for many small business owners, consultants, is when you offer something for free, <laughs> whether that is a Facebook group or uh, courses or a product, like in their case, they are a, a SaaS company, which means software as a service. And they have made a very deliberate 
decision that they want to grow their business to a certain place. They're entirely self-funded, so they don't have to raise a bunch of capital and they don't have to have you know, all of the users all of the time. They've made a decision. The lesson in here is be very cautious before you start something for free, like a Facebook group where you're offering everything because you do end up attracting a lot of tourists, people who are not buying a ticket <laughs> to get your services. They're not hopping the bus all the way. They're buying into getting as much free stuff from you as they can. And then as soon as something changes, they're ready to burn you in effigy as quickly as they can <laughs> and like burn it down. Like these are some of the kindest people I have ever seen. And people who have been in that collaborative for years are suddenly just turning, mm -hmm. turning on them. And it wasn't just that they were helping people with courses. They are really great, especially Aaron, um, Aaron Kelly and Mike Kelly, they run member vault is really great with like email sequences. So they were sending out swipe files to people. They were really guiding people who were starting their business through some really fundamental things. Um, a swipe file would be like uh, an entire sequence for like how to attract people and keep people on your email list, or, you know, and, and get the email marketing going. They would work with people through lead magnets. So offering something for free and getting people into your member vault, but you could also use it if you had a website. Uh, and now all of a sudden, all of the people who are taking all of this information for free, who are getting everything for free, are turning their backs on them and saying, oh, well, you know, you're terrible people. And, you know, some people are not using very nice words <laughs> to describe. And the truth is, they are running a business. They don't owe you anything for free. We could end this show tomorrow and we don't owe anybody anything. <laughs> We don't. Wait, you owe me not. now. <laughs> My point is that, you know, we all are in this to make money and Member that's Vault right. is too. And so in as much as there's a part of me that's like, oh, it's heartbreaking because for really small business owners, it was always mm -hmm. a great thing. Like if you weren't sure if you wanted a course, mm -hmm. if you weren't sure if this was really for you, Member Vault was a great place to start. Like you could start with Member Vault and you could kind of get your feet wet you know, like even you, Shelly, you said that you have a member vault, but you haven't used it for a while. Mm -hmm. Like it's kind of a place where you could have done that, you know, and mm -hmm. that is going away. And so for me uh, personally, with the people that I work with, that's a little bit hard. And I totally completely understand it. And it really speaks. And I think that this is really the heart of the matter when we talk about, you know, should you create a course? Should you uh, have a course or, or, uh, you know, do any of these lessons? Is this something that is right for your business? It's important to understand that creating courses requires resources. It requires time. It takes a great deal of effort. And if you are, in, you know, in bootstrapping <laughs> and you need a platform to be free, yes, there are ways you can do that and understand that it's not elegant because having a course takes time and it takes effort. And, and if you are stepping into that to really grow your brand, then you need to understand that to really do it, you know, right. Or to do it up, you know, where your brand is really maybe showing up, it's going to cost you money. There is no longer, as far as I know, <laughs> like a fully branded website out there that you can have because member vault is taking theirs away. Um, and again, I support that decision. And I think there are a lot of people out there who are, there's going to be a lot of gnashing of teeth. And I've seen it before in other Facebook groups where people think that they've gotten something and they've found a great deal. And then, you know, it gets pulled back and everybody tends to be, they're just not very forgiving. It's kind of in that online space. So, it, and it really validated for me personally as a business owner, why I have never had a Facebook group because I didn't want to just sit in there and be giving and giving and giving. And then if it ends, you know, people tend to turn their backs on you. And mm -hmm. I think that that is uh, unfair and unfortunate and it happens again and again. And I'm sure you've seen it. Haven't you seen that Shelly? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Toby and I used to have a product called Vidnami and uh, 
they sold their business. They sold uh, this wonderful product where you could just put in a, a short script and it would create a video for you. It would do voiceovers. It gave you music. It was amazing. And you could have any length of video you wanted um, up to about three minutes, I think it was. And and it, and it happened very quickly. It was simple to use. And uh, then they sold their business to GoDaddy and everybody was all up in arms about it. And they had built their entire, some people had built their entire business based on this one product. And they were just mm. furious. And what are we going to do now? And what else is there? And so they, people started passing back and forth or other, other pieces of software that they could use that, that had many of the features of Vidnami, but not all of them. Uh, one of them is uh, Lumen 5 mm -hmm. uh, is one of them that, that I use now yeah. uh, for something similar. And uh, But people were just very angry. And, and why, how could you do this to me? And it's like, this is their business. They could do whatever yeah, they it, want with it. They gave you personal. notice. They, they told you what was happening, why it was happening, when it was happening, and what to do about it. And they provided that kind of support, and all you could do was attack them. And 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 that's exactly that's one hundred percent. But not everybody, but some people, uh, you know. And and then there are some people who are being pretty cheeky in the group. Like, you know, like I said, I was one of the founding one hundred. There are a lot of people who bought Lifetime, mm -hmm. and there's somebody who <laughs> posted a meme that was like, "If you bought Lifetime, you know, you'd be like," and it's like a queen like walking down a <laughs> runway, you know. So there are people throwing shade at the people who you know, they all say that they need it to be free. And it's like, you know, they didn't read because they're still offering if you were on the free plan, they're still offering the $19 a month plan, which is still an incredible deal. Yeah. It's very hard yeah. to find that even elsewhere. Yeah, we so, used, we used uh, Member Vault when we had a membership for a, close to a year with uh, the treasure hunting community, we would get together and do book study a couple times on Zoom a week. And we kept all of our resources in Member Vault for them. It was just yeah. a real easy place for them to get and, that get those and it's resources. Really, yeah, it's really great for that. And yeah. I use it, I use it mostly now as like a client portal. So mm -hmm. I use it still. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't, it's not what we're using for epiphany courses for a variety of reasons. And uh, that is something that we can talk about. So should we kind of officially move into to training. training? Okay. We're in training now. <laughs> new sound effects. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> so we are in training as one of the things that we've talked about is that I have a new business called Epiphany Courses, which means I am for the most part, you know, full-time course creator at this point, making business courses that we are selling. I was telling Shelly before the show, the first one, you know, how to how to find the right marketing tools for your small business it is a book an audiobook, and then also a course, and they're all very short form. But what we're talking about today, and, and I think that that was part of what led Shelly to think, you know, maybe we should talk about courses and whether it, building, building a course is right for your business. And so for me, the first, the first question is, who should be pr producing courses and why? So a lot of people think that selling online courses is just a natural progression in your business. Like this is just kind of the next thing that you should be doing. And I, I want to caution people about shoulding all over yourself. <laughs> what I mean by that is there's no shoulds. You don't have to do anything. So for people who do not like teaching, don't create a course. <laughs> if you don't have a passion for walking people through things very slowly, for answering questions, for making decks, you know, slide decks and sharing things with people, taking feedback and, and going through and doing that, like, don't do it. Period. Full stop. You know, it's like having a Facebook group. Nobody has to have a Facebook group. Right. Nobody has to have a course. So that would be kind of the first rung as far as I'm concerned in terms of, of who, who needs to have a course. If you're going around and teaching things like I have been for a few years I've been teaching around the community. I'm like, you know, I should really start monetizing this, these signature talks. I should be monetizing some of the work that I've done with audio lessons and selling it myself. So if it's a natural extension in that way, if you have a group, like a paid membership group, 
and you're already doing maybe some sort of walkthroughs on different products, things like that, that's more of what I would call a natural extension into your business. So it's a good thing to have courses. Um, in terms of making courses, like who should be doing it, again, and we mentioned it a minute ago, I think it's a good idea to have courses if you have some sort of support system. So like at Epiphany, you know, we have, it's Gail and Gail Bender and myself, and we have Caitlin. And Caitlin is helping us with some marketing and some other tasks so that she, so that I can have more time <laughs> to build these courses. So in terms of a production, and she doesn't know it yet, but if Caitlin's watching, she's going to be helping with some of the course building as well. It's a, it takes time and it takes effort. And so if you are not in a position to handle all of that, um, it may not be the time. So it's better if you have maybe a staff or a VA or somebody who can really help you with producing the classes. It helps if you've been teaching because then you are able to really answer questions and then your courses can be about the questions that you're answering over and over again. And, and I think that that really flows into like what it is that you just how you decide what it is you're even going to teach. You know, the best things to teach are the things that you're talking about again and again. And is that, is that kind of what you found Shelly is? Yeah, we, uh, when Toby and I first started doing live streaming on YouTube, uh, we had a lot of people coming to us and asking, how do I start my own YouTube channel? How do I do the, the live streaming? What products do you use? So we created a course to answer all of those questions. Right. Uh, and yeah. and we, we knew exactly what people needed. We could take them step by step through all the different um, you know, sessions to get to what they wanted. And a lot of people en ended up taking that course because they see us doing it and they want to know how it's done. Yeah. Absolutely. And and that's that's really the thing. So if you're trying to decide what you're going to teach, or if you find yourself answering the same questions over and over again, it is a good idea to monetize that in some way or teach it. Like put it out on YouTube and teach it, right? I mean, it is one of the things that you can do to really you're answering, you know, we've talked about SEO on here before where SEO is really just customers asking questions and you're answering them. And it's the same thing. How to videos and behind the scenes content are so huge for people that if you have something that you can share and you don't have to charge a lot of money for it, but you can charge a little bit. And then it does send, it does tend to get people in into your pipeline if you're a service provider. Now with Epiphany courses, it's a little bit different because we are that's our business is creating all of this content and selling it. So we have a real workflow of making a course, making it into a book, making it into an audiobook, <laughs> and we're not upselling people into anything. We are we are teaching people core things that they need for their business, and then they can move on and do whatever else they want to do with their life. So it's a little bit different in terms of why we are creating courses and who we are selling them to. And I, I think if anybody has any questions specifically about who should have a course, what platforms, things like that, you know, please ask those now um, and let us know what your questions are so that we can be sure and answer them. So in terms of, you know, how you do it. So we've kind of talked a little bit about you know, who should be producing courses. If you have a strong passion for it, go ahead and make it like, don't let it stop you if you don't have a big audience. Don't let it stop you if you don't have a big group. And if you don't have a budget, guess what? You can you can do a lot. <laughs> if you have you can use private YouTube videos and give people access. You just need a way to kind of get the word out and a way for you to say, okay, here's where it is. <laughs> when people pay you, then you can send them a link to where they need to go. And there are a lot of different ways of doing that. So you need to just be creative and really think about what it is that you have to offer and how you can share that with the world. And you can do that in so many different ways. Honestly, the first way is you talk to people in person or you have networking events and things on Zoom and maybe you record the Zoom call and then you can just sell it. A lot of people do that. It doesn't have to be like a really specifically designed course, at least in in the beginning. And then as it evolves, then you can talk about like, how do you design a course? 
And I think that as someone who has a lot of training experience, this, it was a big part of what I did. I know I've had such a varied background, but <laughs> I was a teacher in Peace Corps when I lived in Kazakhstan. And then I was also corporate training was a big part of what I did. So we were designing software, bringing it out, doing all of the specifications. Well, then we had to like train the users on how to use the darn thing. <laughs> so that was me. I would go out there. I'm a little bit entertaining and I would go out there and have dog and pony shows and answer people's questions. So I have a lot of experience in how to like design trainings and how to get people engaged and walk people through stuff. If you don't have that experience and you're designing your first course, it's always a good idea to run through it with somebody else and get feedback in, you know, from somebody who's going to be really honest with you about what's really great and what's not really great. If you're using this to market your business, it, from a marketing perspective, you want to make sure that you've got branding on point, that you're really walking people through it, that they understand what it is that you're selling or what's that next step if you have a next step. Also in terms of designing the course, you know, we are talking about like a beginning, middle and end. <laughs> and you have to really think about what is it that they're going to get out of this course. And you kind of, um, you kind of begin with the end in mind to a certain degree, like what's the delta? So if somebody comes in, where are they at when they come in? And then if they complete the whole course, where are they going to be at the end? You know, and, and that's kind of what you have to think about is what is it? What, why are people going to be taking this course? What are we trying to accomplish? And then how are we going to get there? And so when you think about designing your courses, that's really what you need to be thinking about is what journey am I taking people on? Why is that journey important to them? And I know that a lot of this sounds like marketing speak, right? But it's not because if you think about where it is that you want people to go and you're answering the questions every step of the way <laughs> and you design your course in that way, then guess what? When you do get to the point where you have to sell the thing, it's really easy <laughs> because you've basically, you're walking people through that progression and you're giving people exactly what they want. And then when you go to write your sales copy or whatever and talk to people about it, it's a lot easier because you're really focused on, I have seen this problem, XYZ problem as a service provider, as somebody who's delivering specific goods and services, and I am going to deliver you this change. And, and that is exactly what your course is about. And so that is why it's so important to think about where it is that you're taking people. What is that journey? <laughs> and how is it that they are going to be impacted by having gone through the whole experience with you? And so that's how you design the course. And you can do that with a deck. Like I love to design my decks in Canva. That's how I do it. Um, everybody does it a little bit differently, but I need pretty things. <laughs> so I like to make pretty things and do it. And then I just take decks from when I go and speak in public and I adapt them for people who aren't there to ask me questions. And I try to answer the questions that I often get in the deck. <laughs> so I'm answering the questions that I expect. And then that's why you revise courses later. You know, it changes as you and it evolves as you do it. So a lot of courses aren't just set and forget. It is, you know, a whole process for creating it. What um, one of the things that I can recommend to people is if you decide you probably want to do a course that uh, there are a lot of pieces of software and applications out there that are available and they have tutorial videos that will walk you through how to create a course, what you should include, you know, and um, Toby and I created a couple of courses on Udemy and they also have a whole tutorial uh, that you can go through and learn how to do all of these things. So if you think, I would think I want to do it, but I don't know, you go into some of these products and go through their tutorials and it will inform you. And then you'll say, I don't have that kind of time or I don't have that kind of technology experience or I, I don't think I can do this or I don't want to do this. Or you'll say, ah, I could do that. I do that all the time. That's easy. So it will inform you and help you to understand yeah. what's involved and if it's something that you really want to do. And for those of you who don't know, Udemy is a place where you can host your courses. They will facilitate it. There's also, I think, Skillshare is another one that will mm -hmm. do it. 
There are a few different places where you can do that. And you are able to uh, put your course up there and sell it. Um, and then you get a percentage of that. So you're paying in so that they can sell it and they have their own cash register and like all of it. So you don't have right. to deal with it as much, but mm -hmm. you don't get a hundred percent of it. And, and, right. it's, and that's how you pay them to uh, host it for you. Yeah, that's they, you take, for, they take yeah. a commission off it. Yeah. So there's really low tech ways where you're not paying anybody to host it. And then there's, you know, the, the second tier, which is where you can have somebody else hosting it, you know, and then there's the entire self-hosted phase, you know, a lot of people, you know, I really am a big believer in using platforms that you own. Uh, however, uh, sometimes there are some real advantages to using something like a Udemy because you may be able to find new people that you haven't had before. And, and that's kind of what we have found. So I have been doing kind of a hybrid of that where we have hosted the uh, How to Plan Your Podcast. It's uh, the ultimate podcast planning guide on AppSumo. We priced it super low so that we could build an email list. And we have learned and met so many new people through there. We've gotten a lot of subscribers. It's been really great. So we kind of have like a base of people who are interested in what it is that we are creating and selling. We also have people that we can email to. AppSumo takes a percentage of it. Um, but then we get the people on our platform and they can go through and engage with our courses using our platform. Uh, the platform we're using for Epiphany is Teachable, and that's because we can have multiple different instructors, multiple different bios. Uh, as it as it evolves, then we'll be able to do like author splits, and it'll be really good for that. Um, there are a lot of really great platforms out there, like Podia is one that I really like. Um, it's good for solo brands. Member Vault is really great. You know, there's so many different different course platforms out there. Thinkific is good. Um, one of the really popular ones that I actually do not recommend is Kajabi, and that's because they have such severe limits on what you can do. It's like th like three products, and it's like something like $150. And I'm like, that's just too much. A lot of people are going to outgrow that. <laughs> they have such severe limits. And I think that that's the case with any marketing tool that you're looking at is you need to really be aware of what the limitations are so that you can then engage with that product and and it can last you for more than a few months or a couple of years because then the next tier of Kajabi is really expensive. And if you're not selling you know, enough courses to even cover Kajabi, it's really not worth your time. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So, <laughs> we actually yeah, and, uh, recently got marble which is, was offered on AppSumo, and i'm still learning it but it's something that you can use to just get started with uh, simple courses even free free things that you want to just bring people in and run them through here's how to work with us or here's why you might want to work with us little courses that are just introductory like that so yeah, um, i haven't yeah, seen marble i you know you know how I, i'm a big fan of AppSumo. i mean if mm -hmm. courses are going to be a huge part of your business probably don't buy it out on AppSumo, uh, you know, uh, because those those tend to come and go a lot. So you want to be really careful about having something super core to your business. But if you're playing around with courses and you want to learn about it, they had one for a while called Guru Can, and that one has turned out to be a really good platform, I think, that's continuing to grow. Uh, there's one out there now, I can't remember, it's not Marble, it's a different one that will AI generated courses so you can oh. give it like a topic and it starts to really uh, put all of that together uh, you know so there's all kinds of platforms out there. there's all these different ways that you can slice and dice it and but I just highly recommend that you don't get a platform that is so expensive that you have to really hustle to mm -hmm. sell enough to make it work and I know that like Kajabi says, well, we can also be your website and we can do, you know, and, and we can be your email marketing. The email marketing is somewhat limited. The website is okay, but terrible for SEO. There are just so many things, so many factors before you put all of your eggs in like an all-in-one basket that you really mm -hmm. have to consider if you're using it for your business. You know, it, it's a lot different than if you're using it for just for courses. Like there are some platforms that are really great for courses, and they're maybe not as great as your website. <laughs> but if the if something like Kajabi is so expensive, a lot of people tend to just, I'm just going to do everything there and I'm just going to bite the bullet. And it's like, well, you don't have to have a website that costs $250 a month. That's ridiculous yeah. <laughs> for yeah. most business owners. That doesn't make any sense. So you really have to really think about 
in terms of the platform, you know, this is really about like, what are you going to grow into? What makes the most sense? What is cost effective for us? And how can we really grow into it over the long haul? For many people, you could just start with some private YouTube videos, get a sense of whether or not you like it. Maybe even have like small group paid events where you just start testing out like what it's like to you know, have webinars and train people using video and get a lot of feedback on whether or not you really enjoy teaching and whether or not people are really responding to what you're teaching and how you're teaching it. That's what I think. You yeah. know, get your feet um, wet. Get your feet wet. Get out there and do it. You know, and and before I think a lot you of commit people, to Kajabi or some big <laughs> yeah, before you commit to something <laughs> really huge. You know, <laughs> and 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 the same thing like with well, I mean, it's just the case with anything. There's so many right ways to do it. And I think a lot of people say, well, I'm going to, I'll do courses when I can afford Kajabi or I'll do courses mm -hmm. when this or that. Mm -hmm. And the truth is just start, <laughs> yeah. like, just do it. And then, mm -hmm. and then it's all going to be okay. You might, you don't want to put a huge investment in if it's not something that you even enjoy or something that you're even going to want to do. That, that's, that's my two cents worth. A lot of people have this trail of you know, tears, all these places that are just like abandoned projects and things like that. Don't overstress yourself on too many projects. Don't overburden yourself with too much of a, a heavy lift in terms of finance. Test it out, figure out yeah. if it's really what you want to do. Uh, because, you know, you know, promoting and selling a course is, it's a lot of work. You have to plan out like, what does that marketing campaign look like? How many touch points are we going to do? How are we going to get the word out to people? Are we doing things with, you know, Facebook ads or Google ads? How are we going to find the people who need the co course the most and entice them to buy it? So it takes a lot of effort to really see this thing through. And if, if you're not in it <laughs> for all of the facets, then it's best to know that right away before you've made a huge financial investment. Yeah. Or time investment or time investment. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say that through epiphany courses, we've found that this takes a lot more time than I had thought. Like I had, <laughs> I'm going to have to go home and update my little, um, I have a, a dry erase board where I put like my goals and like what, you know, what I'm going to do in Q1 and what I'm going to do. And I have to go back and, uh, <laughs> have to reframe some of those goals because after going through this whole process of what it's going to take to get all of this product out, even though these are things that I've taught for years, I'm like, oh, okay, I need to like reframe and refocus, um, continuing to kind of scale back some of the consulting services that I offer, um, mm -hmm. ramping up more speaking engagements and things like that so that I can clear the mental space to do courses <laughs> <laughs> and now I know it takes longer than I thought, you know, and, and this is not like, it's not that I just that I have to build the whole thing and I'm holding on to it. It's more like, no, I'm the brain. I've got to like <laughs> do a brain dump and like make it into a course. And that's, that's the thing. It, it takes a lot of time and effort and it's not mentioned to discourage you. It's more to say, this is, this is really what it is. You know, yeah. it, if you want to do a good job at it and it's something that you really value, then it does take a little bit more time than just throwing something up there. And then, you know, <laughs> what did somebody call that? Spray and pray. You know, you just put a bunch of stuff out there yep. <laughs> and then pray that somebody gets it. Yep. And when it comes to courses, it takes enough time that you really do need to be focused in on if this is for you, because it does take things like a marketing plan and it takes understanding, you know, the Delta of what it is that you're trying to get out of it, not only as a business owner yourself, but your students, what are they going to get out of it? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so uh, something that, that we kind of learned through the process of doing courses ourselves and doing YouTube videos weekly is save your evergreen content for your courses. If it's something that's going to be changing a lot, like, oh, here's a new app and it's breaking news and this is changing. If that's happening, 
put it in your YouTube content because uh, people expect things to change. When it's a YouTube show, you don't go back three years ago to find out information and expect it to still be relevant today. You look for stuff that's come out this week and this month and this year first to find those relevant pieces of information that are still true. Uh, but with a course, you want to have your evergreen information in there, you know, like marketing principles, they don't change. They're always the same. You know, certain things are always going to be the way they are. Building a business, always going to need the same fundamentals, you know, those sorts of things that are evergreen. That's what you want to make sure to include in your, in your, you know, as your building blocks for a course. Oh, hundred percent. And in my field, I'm finding that to be quite impossible. And that's been <laughs> part of the problem with the, you know, mm -hmm. that some have had some starts and stops on some courses. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is we have, in terms of digital marketing, it used to be that I could teach that. I mean, it was like out of the box, I'd go in and update some things because <laughs> the fundamentals of like digital marketing 101, like that wasn't changing weekly, you know, and now... Right. Since COVID, with everybody being home, everybody, the buyer behaviors, consumer behaviors have changed so incredibly at such a rapid pace. How apps are delivering services or what they're offering, like all of that is changing at such a rapid pace that, you know, having we're having to like update content a lot more often than we used to so that we can serve our people the best. And, and that is something that, you know, I have to think about, and I think it's certainly something that business owners really need to consider is how much, how often are, <laughs> how often are you willing to change this? Right. And it really is about the evergreen content to the extent possible. And then for me, I, I'm thinking about having just making sure that the things that I think are likely to change, having them separate so I can just <laughs> upload a new video and it's not like a huge mm -hmm. commitment, you know, so mm -hmm. you have to be strategic about uh, what it is that you think is likely to change because otherwise, I mean, you're making courses, the same course over and over again. Yeah. And you don't have time for that. That's right. So like, for instance, if Jen was teaching something and then she wanted to talk about here are the apps you should be looking at to make that work, that should be a separate video that she could change yeah. out because apps change a lot. All those things that she knows are going to be changing in the next 12 months uh, then that's a separate piece. And you keep your videos short anyways, because people can only sit for so long before they, they need to do something else. But keep them under, you know, five minutes or less. And then when you have to go in and change that out, it's not such a big deal because you're like, okay, well, these apps have changed. Let me go in and change that one video. Keep it yeah. updated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's been the challenge is how, how fundamentally how businesses deliver services are changing. That never mm -hmm. used to be the case. It used to be, you could just talk about different apps for how you connect everything. Now it's, it's in my field is changing fundamentally, but for most people, that's not the case for most people. It is, you know, squirrel away the things that are likely to change, like which apps, you know, you want to use. And then the rest of it, you can kind of uh, keep it in. And, and, you know, it's interesting. So yeah, five minutes or less, that's really a common video length. I've taken other courses that are much longer and I find that I have to pause them and, and continue later because I get distracted and busy. Mm -hmm. um, so you yeah. really want to pay attention to that. You want to think about, and that's one of the things that I like about member vault, although they are starting to add it into other course platforms is how are you going to have people finish? Or do you not even care about that? Because a lot of people don't finish a course. Mm. So you have to really think about that, you know, how long you want to retain somebody, what that looks like for you. And then that will will help. Maybe don't put all the goodies at the end <laughs> because maybe they're not going to get that far. <laughs> you know, you want to really think about how you kind of weave things in to try and keep people, keep people engaged. Yeah. Engagement is a really big part of selling courses. And giving them those wins, those immediate wins. Like as soon as they get on and do the first introductory video, they should accomplish something, right? They need to feel like, oh, well, I filled out this card or I, you know, wrote down the name of my first idea or something. They have to have some kind of win to keep them going, to keep them engaged. <laughs> Absolutely. So do you have any mistakes that you've made that people should avoid that 
that you can think of? I mean, don't we all make mistakes all the time? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, th- I think that in terms of mistakes, I would say that, I don't even know if I would call it a mistake. Understand that if you are paying a platform, whether it is Podia, Teachable, Member Vaults, whatever, um, really thoroughly understand things like the limits, uh, the limitations of it, what it can and can't do. And a lot of people will say, well, you should just go with WordPress. There's like some downsides to that as well. That's highly technical. And the back end doesn't necessarily look as good for your users. So you have to think about that as well. So you really want to think about before you choose a platform, what it is that you want your users to get out of it, what kind of experience they're going to have, what is it that you want to get out of it. Um, And the reason why is it is really hard to change. (laughs) And I don't know if I could call it a mistake or not, Mm. but it's, I had chosen Podia and I really liked it. And then I shifted my business. We created Epiphany. I got Podia for my own business and I bought it for the year. And that was the mistake was I bought it for the year. And then I had, and then before I ever even created a course and sold it, I had to shift onto a different platform that could handle AppSumo better, that could handle multiple teachers and, and, you know, all kinds of revenue splits and things like that. Mm-hmm. So to the extent that you can plan out what it is that you have on tap, like whether it is, you know, do you want a platform that hosts the videos there so you don't have to have a Vimeo or, you know, do you want, you know, what is it that you want it to do? How, how easy and all inclusive do you want it to be? Uh, Because it's hard to move. And that was the mistake I made. I had gotten like a lot of my stuff up from member vault into Podia. And then before I could even get it out, I had to like, undo that and put it somewhere else. And that was really, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. And I would say that that's a, that's a mistake that, you know, do this with intentionality, take your time, maybe don't buy it for a year. (laughs) Like I do (laughs) Uh, to save a little bit of money, you know, make Mm -hmm. sure that it's the right investment because courses can take a lot of time and a lot of effort. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I suppose we tried it out on Unimi just because we didn't want to have to market it other than to just say this exists, go check it out. Um, yeah. But again, you don't make very much money because Unimi is always putting their, their courses on sale. So oh, yeah. uh, a lot of times you're making three to $5 if somebody even finds your course and there's so many there that it's, it, it can get lost very easily. Um on the other side of that is doing it yourself on a platform like Thinkific or Teachable or uh, one of these. And then you have the responsibility of letting people know it's there, selling it, uh, getting people to go there to sign up, and then, you know, really holding their hand as they move through the course. Yeah, <laughs> so oh, it's, yeah, it's a, you it's have a to make that commitment. determination of what are you up for? You know, yeah, you just want to it's put it out there and forget it or do you want to babysit everybody (laughs) well not only babysit everybody it's it's like do you want to answer all the questions do you want to if somebody has technical issues do you want to answer the technical questions if Mm -hmm. you know it's there's a lot to it and you have to think about it and that's why in terms of who should be producing courses yeah you know it really is about the phase of your business really should dictate which which of the ways that you decided, I mean, that's the thing about Udemy. I mean, they're selling courses like 90% off all the time. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I want more control over pricing. Uh, and for Epiphany, certainly we wouldn't do that because, you know, we want to have our own different uh, teachers out there. We want to look at it a lot differently. You know, Udemy really doesn't work <laughs> for what we're trying to accomplish on on epiphany because we want to have several different courses with several different teachers we are not a competitor for you to me but it's similar like we want we are vetting people at a much higher level before they're ever allowed to come on and and sell courses on the platform so it it does take a lot of time and it does take a lot of effort and it's really important to look through all of that so you can avoid some of the pitfalls you know I mean, I took a class in the last year that was all private YouTube videos and they were amazing. 
like the class itself was amazing and it was all handled through email marketing and like sending me reminders and getting mm -hmm. things to me. It was a really great course experience. And it was all done. Like I said, she did it for free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, she's selling it through her email platform and through her and through her website and talking to people in Facebook groups and the delivery of the course. That's all free for her. She has, for her. Yeah. She yeah. doesn't have to, you know, she doesn't have to pay YouTube anything. The downside of that is all the YouTube ads and, you know, all of the distraction of being on that casino that we know of as YouTube, you know, there's upsides and downsides to everything. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, let's talk about a epiphany courses and what that is and what, what, what you're doing with it. So let's stick that up there. Oh, wow. Tell us about that. Yeah, so Epiphany Courses, it is short, I won't even say necessarily short form, but courses that are an hour or less geared toward decision makers within organizations. We're really targeting businesses in the first five or so years of their business. There are just so many questions that come up for people. And what we're doing is creating courses that are standalone courses, meaning you're going to get everything that you need out of them within that hour long course or less. We want to really make them an hour or less. And also it's not selling you or branching you into something bigger or different. So these are, again, like if you have questions on a certain topic, <laughs> like we're just going to give people that quick hit and then hopefully you enjoy it and you'll come back and tell your friends about it. These aren't like, we're going to send you through a whole path and then you're not going to get answers. And then you have to you know, buy the next course or pay for a big marketing package from me or somebody else. And that's kind of the difference is the secret sauce. We know that business owners don't have 16 hours to consume content about, you know, how to, how to choose marketing tools or what do I need to have on my website or, you know, any of the things that come up in the first few years of business, we are giving people the answers right away so that they can do it. Uh, right now, we only have a couple of courses up and they're both about podcasting. Uh, we're working a lot on different marketing courses. That's the stuff that I've been teaching all around the state. And the price point is going to vary based on kind of what people are expected to get out of it, <laughs> the long term <laughs> of their business. Uh, but they aren't going to, these aren't going to be like five or $6,000 courses or anything like that because they're so short. Yeah. But the impact can be very great sure. if you do the time to, to, to invest in your own business because what the courses are are really like, okay, here's what you need to do <laughs> to, to really improve in this area or that mm -hmm. area. Um, they're kind of quick, like practical. Quick, quick practical coaching sessions to really help people get through stuff. Excellent. And so, you're hosted on Thinkific, did you say? No, we're on Teachable. Uh, Teachable. The, website, the website is on on WordPress. We have okay. a pretty prolific blog mm -hmm. right now. And then uh, we're hosted on Teachable. And yeah, it's been really great so far. We've had a great experience. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and for those of you who are considering doing a course, but you don't have the technology know-how, and you want somebody to just take over the production of it for you, we we can do that at AGK Media Studio. So uh, just go to agkmedia.studio and reach out to us, and uh, we're happy to do all the production for you. And then you'll just take all that material. It all belongs to you. Well, you just the production people. You take it all and you put it up into, for instance, Teachable or one of those types of products, and you have a course. So That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so that's... Um, all about courses. Yeah, that's right. I feel like we covered a lot. Yeah, I think we? so. Okay. I think so. I didn't see any questions, so we must have Me answered either. everything. Yeah. <laughs> but if you do have questions and you're watching this later after it's no longer live, make sure you put those in the comments on the video or uh, just reach out on the website womenconquerbiz.com. That's right. And then in the show notes for the podcast, we also have links yes, for right. how to reach out to us as well. So uh, tweak of the week. Tweak of the week. <laughs> tweak of the week. Something that Toby and I discovered this week is called <clears throat> PodPage. PodPage takes your 
podcast, RSS feed, and creates a website with it, basically. Uh, it's, it's really super quick. It's just fun. And, and it gives you a bunch of different layouts that you can choose from. And then after you've chosen layout, you can still further uh, personalize it however you want to do it. Uh, we have been able to add our podcast, our blog, and our YouTube videos into one place, along with uh, they can you can fill out a little uh, interest form to get our free download and uh, you get added to our email list and you get a free download. Uh, it shows our uh, tweets and our Facebook posts. Um, so that keeps rolling. And so when we're doing a live stream and we're, and we're out live on our Facebook or our Twitter, it picks it up and it shows it on our site. And uh, we, there's our videos uh, that, come from our That's YouTube great. channel, which is, of course, how we start our podcast. Um, and you can see it shows whatever you need. You know, it shows where we are hosted on the different um, podcast players. Um, we have our blog. We have on our uh, we have an about page, which we put our company information there that we talk about what we do as a company and and uh, how to get started with us on our about page. So That's a great. lot of really helpful stuff there that all you have to do is just plug things in, plug things in, and you don't have to put a lot of thought into it. And um, the So then is, is this replacing your agkmedia.studio? We are in the process of deciding that. We're going to see how this performs. They, <laughs> they have told us that they, are, uh, they work really hard to provide excellent SEO for your uh, brand and your podcast. So we're going to see how it performs over the next few months and then make that decision about uh, do we need any other kind of a website or is this going to be what we want? So, yeah. Pod yeah, page. I mean, and I, I think it's great, especially for you know, for people who have a show and they really want to have a place to keep their show. Um, I'll be curious to see how it works as a whole business website. Uh, I mm -hmm. tend to think it's probably not robust enough for most business owners to really use it as the whole site. But so much of what you and Toby do really is a spin off of these shows that you're doing. Mm -hmm. It might work really well for you. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's uh, it's all, you know, the devil's in the details, as they say. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, and a lot of these things are things that, you know, I, you know, I do have on the current website and some of them are like, oh, wow, I never thought of doing that before. <laughs> um, there's a, a guest form. If, if people want to be a guest on our show, they can go yeah. there, fill that out. It's got its own release right there and, uh, that they provide, which is a wonderful release we read through it and it's like this is perfect we don't it's even like need anything more than this yeah. and uh then it, it gives you the opportunity to yeah. to build an email list to build a uh, a guest profile list you know it's just it's really thought thoughtful and wonderful for podcast producers mm -hmm. no i think it's perfect for perfect for shows. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because, you know, we use Captivate for the Women Conquer Business show as the host, and they've started building in podcast guests. Like, I think everybody's trying to help us solve that problem. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't seem like a problem like having guests, but it is a lot to manage. And so it looks mm -hmm. like they're really trying to help with PodPage. Uh, yeah. I'm not familiar with this product at all. So we'll just have to wait and see, you know, we'll just have yeah. to see. It's, it's fairly new and they do have an affiliate program, which we're going to get in on because we're, we're excited about it right now. We're talking about it on all our shows. So we're like, okay, well use our affiliate link and we'll get a, yeah. you know, an additional uh, kickback and it doesn't cost you any extra. So we'll make sure yeah, to include great. that in the show notes. So if anybody is interested in checking that out and using our affiliate link, uh, you're welcome to do that. Cool. That's awesome. So I think we're about ready to close. So what do you okay. have for your uh, inspirational, inspirational nugget? Inspirational nugget time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Magical inspiration. So I was um, going through my daily stoic book today and also taking a look at my goals and you spoke about your goals as well. Um, for goals, 
on my board, I like to include things that I have done or I am currently doing so that I can say, oh, yeah, promoting my women in podcasting book. I'm doing that. I'm, you know, making that happen. I'm in the middle of it and I'm proud of myself and I'm doing great. And that gets me right in the moment is to say, I am proud. I am satisfied. I'm doing well. I'm happy. If all you have for your goals is things you haven't yet accomplished, like, Mm -hmm. oh, here's a a weight goal, you know, an ideal weight goal that I want to hit. Well, I'm not there yet, you know, so that could be like future B is going, oh, I'm not there yet. You know, anxiety and worry and, and dissatisfaction, basically. So I like to have a mix of both. So that Mm -hmm. if I'm feeling dissatisfied by I'm not anywhere near my weight goal, but I'm working on it every day. Um, But I am doing these other things, you know, and I'm in the middle of it. So I can be proud and satisfied with what I'm doing. So I I suggest that to people to make sure that you include those things that you're already doing every day that are getting you closer to those bigger goals. Absolutely. You have to have some way to feel good about everything that you're doing or you're not going to do it. (laughs) It's true. (laughs) You know, (laughs) like, yeah, I, I think I've mentioned before, I'm still reading Atomic Habits. I love it because it's really about doing the little things and having that dedication and, and it always adds up to something big. And I, I really believe that. So I think that, that what Shelly's talking about is hundred percent spot on. It helps you reduce anxiety to feel good in the moment. Yes. And, and you can only feel proud and happy and joyful in this moment. <laughs> if you're thinking about the future or you're thinking about the past, you're not going to be proud and happy and joyful. You're going to feel either anxious or regretful or, you know, yeah. so yeah. Think about so. things you're doing right now and how they're going to pay off in the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. All right. Like watching this video, right? That's, right. That's going to pay off because you yeah. learned all this stuff today about glistening. listening to the show. That's so awesome. <laughs> all right. Well, everybody, right. you have a really great week and thank you for being there. Thank you so much. We're here. We'll see you Thanks next for being here.